Hello. Good work. Good week, everyone. This is Pasha's Shlach we read today. Next week's Pasha's Korach. You know, it's it's in a certain way. I think that you can make, maybe you can make a connection between the two. This week we spoke about the spies, the Miraglin. Next week we speak about Kerach. And I read I read from uh, David Gwitzman, he speaks about the Miraglin, about the uh, the um the reality of a spy from Miraga. How an Aragal is always um, tense. You can never trust anyone. I mean, every Russell, you know, puts him, you know, like on a total edge. There's never a chance for him to just, you know, lay back and, you know, sit down with a cup of coffee, just relax. He can't do that. Um, there are certain people who are like that, who live their life like that. Lahavdal, you know, there are, there are people who live a life of miraglin, people who are far from a Kodesh Baruch. They don't have anyone to trust because they don't know Kodesh Baruch. They don't even know all of him. And, and so they have nobody who trusts. So they they figure that everybody's out to get them because everybody's out to get them because they're all like that. And all is fair, you know, in money and war and everything else that they allow themselves. And as a result, they live a life that there's no safe moment. They're always like ready for for war for anything. The Havdil, there's there are people who are, you know, who are interim mitzvahs. But they also live their lives like 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 a spy, meaning that nothing that they ever do is good enough for them. No matter how much they do, it's not enough. And they're ready at any moment, they're ready for this, the other shoe to drop. Something bad is going to happen. Something is going to foul up. I'm telling you, some... one of the basics of Munoz is that, you know, we have the Miraglim over here. The Chazal said that the reason why. They reneged on their 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 uh on their, their assignment to go to Israel uh and bring the uh, uh the proper uh, reports about the land. And really, you know, everything that they that they said could be looked at like a spy look at things and uh somebody who is sure of himself, was close to the Muna. It says that the people that we saw there are are giants. Okay, you can look at it and says like, wow, Ishbaru has beat the Egyptians. Now imagine what kind of miracles Ishbaru is going to perform from us, for us. Meaning these guys, uh, and so forth and so on. Um, it's a choice. You make a choice. You want to live your life as a spy, always worried, always like a negative. Um, we are looking at things. And it's interesting. Yosef Atzadik also told his brothers, you are Miraglin, you are spies. You know, Yosef did not mean to be Mitzar, his brothers, but he told them. The whole, basically, was Miramis and then that your entire existence is like, is he going to get us? Is our small brother going to get us? He's a, you know, he wants to rule over us, but it, which led to his you know, to selling him to Egypt. He says, you didn't realize how much how much you need me, the tzaddik. 
just live, relax. What you're doing is wonderful. It truly is wonderful. Enough. Baruch Hashem, you have, you have the tzaddik to rest on. Shlech. You don't do that. You live a life of miraglin. There comes, you know, the crying for nothing that that brings about Tisha B'av and so forth and so on and so forth and so forth. I think this is maybe a connection between this week and next week. But that said, meanwhile, meanwhile, back at the ranch, we are the Sipur of Al Shem Tov. This story is the uh, at that time historically there was something was called the committee of the four countries the four lands it was a, a Jewish organization that made decision was was overseeing all the Jewish killers in Poland and the uh, representatives of all the killers would come every year to Lublin for the, for for you know for decisions for meetings and make decisions on you know relevant subjects one time the very famous Rav also was a very wealthy man but the Avram Abba said before everybody that we have to investigate and find out what's the deal with the Baal Shem Tov because it is they heard this is what they believed. Hashem is Amaretz. So if Chatzah Chalila is Amaretz, how can he have Ruach Hakodesh? So it says Lo Amaretz Chosid. Amaretz cannot be a Chosid. So they decided to call the Baal Shem Tov before them, and he came. So when when they, the Baal Shem Tov came to the committee of the Abba Ratzis, Rabbi Avraham was the head. He was the uh, was a speaker. He says, according to what we heard from your conduct, it seems like you have a Rupakridish and your excellency is a big Tamit Chochan. But it's it's very difficult because we heard that you're just an Amaratz. So let's ask you, if you don't mind, please, some uh, main subject La Aloha. So Rabbi Abba, Avram Abba, asked Baal Shem Tov, if in Rosh Chodesh a person forgot to say, Yale Vayovay, what is, what is the Allah? So Baal Shem Tov told him, this particular Allah that you asked is something that I don't need, and not you. Because I never forget to say Yale Vayovay in Rosh Chodesh. And you, who you, you do forget to say Yale Vayovay, even if you repeat a davening again, the way it says, you will forget it. When he said, that, Rabbi Abba, you know, got really scared because if this day was Rosh Chodesh, he forgot to say, Yalavi Yobel. Even the second time when he repeated his prayer. So he saw the Bashanta really knows what's hidden. So he decided, you know, he's going to spy after here, he's going to spy again. He's going to spy after the Baal Shem Tov in the place where he's at and see how he behaves. So he rushed and he went to the place, the hotel, the inn, whatever the Baal Shem Tov was staying, and, and you know, hid himself and watched out from a, from a, a, a people to see what the Baal Shem Tov is doing, the Chadr Chadorim. And the Baal Shem Tov was there, they, they you know, they prepared uh, a comfortable bed when he saw the bed, he started screaming. Hashem Tov started screaming. This particular bed, somebody has made a big avera with a goitre. How can I possibly sleep on it? So immediately the owner of the inn came and he begged about Hashem Tov. And he says, it's true that his son-in-law actually was together with the goitre. So immediately the Shem Tov said, Rabbi Abba, Mama, do you hear what he says? So immediately Rabbi Abba came out of his hiding place. He saw the real greatness of the Baal Shem Tov. 
and he came to apologize to him for suspecting he was an Amatz. Rabbeinu says that when a person hears about uh, a strife, a disagreement between tzaddikim, you should know that Mishamayim, they, they bring this to him to hear about it because he has damaged the perfection of his brain through garbage. And therefore, Mishamayim, it is decreed that he will be pushed away from being close to Tzadikim. And the way that he's being pushed away is by hearing about the strap, the Machloikis between the Tzadikim. And because of that, he says, oh, you know something, they're probably both right and just let him, let him go. When a person has, uh, hears a machloik between tzaddikim, he must realize, says Rabbeinu, that this is his test mishamayim. When he hears about these kind of things, his heart should break, should realize that this is his test. He's being tested. The time mishamayim, you hear machloik between tzaddikim because anything that, you know, the matter that the tzaddik is being judged by, which is Shmir Sabris, this is where you damaged. And because of this damage, you hear by the Machlokes bin Tzaddikim. Truth be told, if you did not, would not have damaged your, your, your brain, you wouldn't hear about it even. The gazillion things in this world that you don't hear about. Why did you hear Dafka about this? People don't realize that the Tzadik Emes, Tzadik Emes, is somebody that the entire world is open to. That's why in the story the Baal Tov said, I will never miss Yalav Yov and Rosh Hashanah. Because the mind of the Baal Shem Tov, the Tzadik, Tzadik Emes, is the world. And Rosh Chodesh, the Baal Shem Tov, is Rosh Chodesh. The Yal of Yavoy is, is not an avoider for the Baal Shem Tov. Chas v'chalilu, to forget Yal of Yavoy, Baal Shem Tov, that's an avoider. The Bainu says, only for the Tzadikim, and every person has ups and you know, going up and going down. Going down is easy. You know, you take off the handbrake and you're going downhill. Going up, okay, then you have to push. So but Sadiqim is the opposite. Going up is easy. It's going down, it's difficult. And you can't go up unless you go down first. Because within the going down is the, 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 the root of going up, meaning when a person goes down, when a person fails, when a person does things that he should not do, when a person's, you know, his, 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 Merchen de Gadlos, you know, his expanded consciousness is gone, and suddenly he feels like, you know, whoa, you know, I, I lost my Emuna, or I lost my Bitochen, I don't know. You know, I was, you know, I was talking like, you know, like Mr. Big, throughout the time uh, when things were going well, you know, I thought, oh, but um, now the things are not going so well. And suddenly my Amuna is, is like, I don't know where I am. And things look so dark and I don't know what to do. What will it be? What should I do with myself? Then a person needs to hold on to his bitachon kodesh baruch 
in the fact that the chasadim of HaKadosh Baruch Hu are without end. Okay, so my, my world right now is dark. I don't see anything. I don't feel anything. I don't have an impetus to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to do, you know, to, to daven and to learn. Okay. All I have now is just my belief in the chasadim of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Kaddish Baruch Hu knows what's going on with me. Kaddish Baruch Hu will pick me up and bring me close to him again. That is the root for the Aliyah, the root for his going up again. The Tzaddik knows everything because his mind encompasses everything. There's a story, a very famous story about the Magad of Mizritch that they asked the Kaddish Baruch I'm sorry, they asked uh, the Baal Shem Tov about something Baal Shem Tov sent him. It was a Pshat Ashgocha Protis. You know, where does it go? Do you know this big Machlokes? Whether, you know, Ashgocha Protis means that that the, a personal um, provision of Kaddish Baruch Hu sees, is it every single creature? Or by a person is every single person. However, by the animals is by species. In other words, all the species together have a single asgocha for all of them. So the Shita Baal Shem Tov was that it is, it's every single one. So the, the Magid asked him about this. And the Baal, the Baal Shem Tov sent him to a certain place. And he says, Stand on this. I don't think they went together with him. I'm not sure what the story was. Uh, and he showed him a tree. He says, a tree, and he says, in the tree, you see the limb. The tree goes all the way out. He said, the very end of the limb, there's there's um there's a leaf. So just watch it. And as they were watching it, the leaf tore off and it fell down to the ground, you know. And when it reached the ground, the, the wind it was a summer day. The wind picked it up and the leaf started rolling. And it rolled and it rolled and it rolled until it got to a certain place. And then the leaf rested. And they told him, take a look under the leaf. So the Magi took a look under the leaf. And he saw that underneath the, underneath the leaf, there was an ant that passed out from the heat. And the leaf came over it and gave it shade to resuscitate it. So it's very easy, of course, for me to see the 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 the, the tremendous Ashgoha Kadesh Baruchu watches over an ant, everything. I remember many years ago, you, know, you probably remember Life magazine. It was a big magazine. Whoever remembers it, uh, it was a big magazine. It was a picture magazine. It was beautiful. And there was a spread. Now, Life was a big, big magazine. And there was a close up of an ant. And the ant was covered, was all green. And its pincers were stuck in the leaf. And the 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 um, inscription underneath the picture said, explained that the picture showed an ant that had uh, a fungus. Uh, 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 a leaching fungus that grew up inside it. And that fungus within the ant ate up the ant from the inside. And the last ditch effort of the ant before it died was to stick its pincers onto the leaf and it died. And then the fungus, the victor, bore a hole in the exoskeleton of the ant and just 
covered up the entire ant. Oh, big picture. And I looked at it and I'm like, wow. What an amazing drama. Tiny little world. This world of Hashem Tov showed the Magid of Mizrish. But anybody that has a Sechel Amiti, remember my friend told me, he told me this particular story. The real lesson from here is not about HaKadosh Baruch Hu oversees every single minutia in creation. The Baal Shem Tov had it in mind. He knew in every single detail of the creation. He knew which leaf is going to fall and cover up the end. The entire creation is in the cognizant awareness of the Tzadikans. Let's take Bezat Hashem. A quick look at Sikha Saran for this week. Okay. Sikha 248. Bueno said, it would have been good if a person a person, Shiv Halo is a Makam, he would choose a certain space, place for himself. Yesh of Shamish would sit the Yoim of Alayla day and night. The Yasok, Betoiro, or Betfilo, or Vedis Hashem. Busy learning Toiro, davening, or Vedis Hashem. Shitzorich, Lechol, when a person needs to eat. Yorot Satoch Ezebais, let him run into any house, whatever house there is. Vikach Shem Echipozon is Chatich Eslech, and then quickly, you know, just take, you know, a piece of bread from them. Chayetze, La Vira Voinoi to Paxes, his hunger. Lachakach Yachzo Lavodosi. Let him get back to avoid the session. The hardest thing for a person to, to come to terms with is that there's nothing in this world that has any importance on its own. Fame is not important on its own. Money is not important on its own. Even health is not important on its own. Uh, uh, definitely pleasure is not important on its own. Suffering is not important on its own. There's nothing this world has to offer that means anything. There's a something in us that, you know, like, there's certain, something about us that, you know, yeah, Vedis Hashem is, is very important. It's the most important thing in the world. Beseda, Beseda, Beseda. But, uh, you know, there's this, uh, uh, you know, what about, you know, what about family? What about uh, uh, vacations? What about, uh, you know, you know, having people think good things about you? What about, uh, everything is important vis-a-vis -vis the way that it influences the toughness, which is a way to such a hand. In on its own, as a standalone, it has absolutely no meaning whatsoever. But the point, you know, when we look what Rabinu says here, a person, it would be very, very good for a person just to find a place for himself, and just sit there and learn Torah and daven and serve a Kaddish Baruch Hu when he's hungry, just go beg for a piece of bread, eat it, and go back. That means he has no footprint in this world at all. And we think about it. Oh, man. 
You know, it's hard to swallow. I mean, this world, especially when you're going, you know, you're a young man, you're, you know, a child in the teens, in his 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, was it 60s, 70s, it's just like, maybe there's something, there's something matters in this world. You want me to give everything up? Yeah, because nothing really matters. Nothing matters except every decision. But we want something, you know, a little bit, something of my own. I mean, well, you know, something a little. The truth is that except for the big tzaddikah, the big oib de Hashem, everybody else is a certain mixture of the two. The people that are not close to the tzaddik, their hashkafa, the point of view is to begin with, you don't need such extremes. You know, as well, okay, you know, you can this, you can enjoy life a little bit, you can do this, you can do that. Why not? These people will never be zerka to that. Oh, Hashem, they have tremendous muscles. They can be tzaddikim, b'le'ayin ara. But that's not the derek of tzaddikim g'doyle. But even those who are close to the tzaddik, and they know that the truth is that that's the name of the game. You don't need any, any input, any, uh, at the end of a string, nothing, nothing in this world. Except what the Torah says, and that's it. We are struggling with, yeah, but I like a steak every once in a while. I like sushi. With the sushi, I like some wasabi and, and ginger. And soy sauce. A little tariyaki, maybe. And it's a it's a it's a game that you go in and you go out and you go in and you go out, and there's a certain kind of 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 self image that each and every one of us, each and every one of us, sort of keeps. He says, you know, I can do this. I am my space in the way Hashem is from here to here. This is my minimum, and this is my maximum. I cannot, you know, so most of this is also very good. I mean, don't go below the minimum. There's a Moch Hashem, you know. We're not robbing banks. You know, we're not using crack. Moch Hashem. Not doing whatever it is. You know, Hashem is a great thing. But there's also the maximum. And the whole idea is, whenever it is that you move a little bit, you know, to to expand your maximum, you're also raising up the bar of your minimum. In other words, there are certain things that you're not going to do anymore. There are certain things you're going to look that you used to look at. You're going to you're not going to look at that anymore. Certain things you used to read, you're not going to read that anymore. And 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 Rabino says that when a person moves like that, and a yoda, it's like. Because you move and then you go back and then you move again. But there's a certain a shift, a seismic shift that you you moved. It says in, in Oilem Yisraelionim, in upper realms, a person is running a gazillion of light years, spiritually. The tiniest move. And the main thing is to be besimcha, to be happy. I read again Shal Shudas, the Zerbina said that the Zerbina says to Revov, there's a name Eke, which is the holy name of Sir Sakesa, which is Yudke Yudke. In Hebrew, you say this person is Ye, a person is or, or Eke means that a Ye, I'm going to be. He says, listen, the the, the wedding starts at six o'clock. I need yesh. I'm going to be there. 
word is Aleph K, Yud K. It's 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 a you know it's a verb people use. I'm going to be there. Chazal explains what is what is Shem Aleph K Yud K. Anas the Zer says Anas Amin Lemeve. I'm preparing an existence for myself. When you say you're going to be somewhere at a certain time, you're preparing an existence for yourself at that place at a certain time. So Shem Eke means you're preparing an existence for yourself. When he says the main simcha is Shem Eke, which denotes the Olam Abba. Because you are preparing right now with every avoid that you do, an existence for yourself, for the world to come, which is Eke, which is forever. Anything else until, until then means nothing. As the song goes, everything is dust in the wind, nothing. Except in how it enables and prepares you to reach the Eke, to reach the world to come, to reach infinity. Baruch Bezat Hashem will help us See, every single Dibor, we have Baruch Hashem, we have three guys. We have a few more people that watch it online, and a few more people that use Telegram are in the group, and then they listen to it afterwards. Every single word that a person is zeichet to say to a friend, the Mechazakim, the Baruch Hashem, what more could you ask for? Oh Hashem, of the tzaddik emes, the force of the tzaddik emes is the strongest force in the universe. Even the force of gravity, which is the dominant force in the physical universe, is only you know a a, a trickle, something that trickles down from the force of the tzaddik. Oh Hashem. We are connected to the force of the tzaddik. In the meantime, we speak Yibre Chizuk ve'emuno. Od davar tov. Remembering Alavai, we could sit somewhere and learn Torah, daven, deal by Beis Hashem. When we're hungry, just bite something and then go back. Alavai. Everything that we do is about getting closer to that ideal. We should always keep this ideal in mind. That is the name of the game. I can do it. Uh -uh, no, what can I do? But I can move an iota towards it. And another iota towards it. In the meantime, I can bear Kodesh Baruch Move me out of your curve of the Sadiq Amos. What's going to be? Everything else is going to be okay. It'll be fantastic. Simcha Rabba Bezat Hashem. Ek is the name of Simcha Bezat Hashem. Kodesh Baruch should help us. If we give out, we get weak. Next week, summer. Hashem, I'll be to see Gula Shlema, Rabbi Amenu, Bat Hashem, I'll be zoichet to see Bevis Meshiach Tzitkenu, Bezat Hashem. Soon, soon, soon in our days, Bezat Hashem. Have a good week, everyone.